enormous power and money. Who do the Rothschilds and Rockefellers fear, and who is behind the world's vast wealth? Greetings. Today, we will talk about a tycoon and speculator who long before Rothschild and Rockefeller succeeded in huge business, with what famous activities the dollar trillionaire started his way. Is it true that he participated in the creation of the Gorky plant and the Likachev plant in the USSR, and how he managed to exchange 250 bonds for 100 tons of gold in China? Be sure to watch the video to the very end to learn all the details of this story. It's time to unite. As you probably know, the Rothschild and Rockefeller dynasties are the leading clans in the world because their inheritance is more than solid. They are doing their best to make the American currency the one world equivalent. Let's turn to the facts that are known to date. Rothschild's fortune is estimated at $4 trillion, while Rockefeller's is estimated at $3 trillion. $40 billion was combined by the two clans to overcome the international financial crisis as well as to find stability in difficult times. At least that is the official version. It is interesting to know why first two dynasties actively opposed each other for many years of the last century and then suddenly decided to create a strong alliance. However, it is worth paying attention to this. At one point, the Rothschilds and Rockefellers realized who is their main competitor. And it is not just a tycoon, but also a statesman and also a speculator. Who is this man? Well, about everything in order. Moving to New York and starting his career. So, meet Bernard Mans Baruch. It is important to note that the ancestors of this man founded the Standard Chartered Bank in the XVII century. But the future trillionaire began his journey after he moved to New York with his family. After young Baruch graduated from City College, he got a job in one of the city's stock exchanges. And Bernard was so keen on finance that in 1903, he founded a brokerage company under his own name. Subsequently, he was given the nickname, the Lone Wolf of Wall Street. But here, as you can assume, Baruch's endeavors do not end. Soon he becomes a dollar millionaire and his activities see no obstacles in the form of crises and instability in the United States at that time. Finally, Bernard Manns finances the election campaign. Woodrow Wilson becomes a candidate for the post of American president. As a result of Baruch's successful actions, Wilson wins and becomes the 28th president of the United States in 1913. As a thank you, he admits the tycoon to the country's national defense agencies, cooperation with the USSR. As you remember, at the beginning of the last century, our country was engulfed by a series of wars, revolutions, as well as industrialization with collectivization. At that time, Bernard Mans Baruch, on the instructions of the President of the United States, became the head of the American military industrial complex. He learns what is happening on the territory of our country and therefore tries to support cooperation with the USSR. Especially since Baruch had experience, the rate of US economic growth increased even though there was a series of crises. By the way, it was Vladimir Lenin who offered Bernard Baruch to participate in the restoration of the national economy. It is no secret that the construction of Soviet industry is directly indebted to the Americans and it is precisely the enterprises for the production of cars in Volgograd, Kharkov, Chelyabinsk. In addition to ordinary cars, military equipment was required for the needs of the Red Army, so the Americans helped the Soviets to establish the production of tanks and armoured cars. Interesting fact, Baruch assisted in the construction of Gaz and Zil. Moreover, the factories were built on the subsidies of Henry Ford, who was very successful in this area. The Americans, among other things, financed other industrial enterprises. The most recent ones were steel-making plants in Magnitogorsk and Kuznetsk. Return to New York. After a trip to the USSR, Bernard Baruch returns to America. And there, at the end of October 1929, there is a collapse of the New York Stock Exchange. At the same time, the US visits the British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. 
Baruch begins to tell the statesman about how he stopped in time and stopped playing on the stock market. And then he adds that he sold all the stocks he had and with the money from the sale, he bought US government bonds. That's how the depreciation passed Baruch by. Oh, you can't even imagine how inspired Churchill was by such lectures. So Winston began to cooperate actively with Bernard Manns. Subsequently, they are joined by other well-known personalities, but already from the Soviet side, Eugene Rosen and Maxim Litvinov. Only the latter became a traitor in 1939. Apparently, under the influence of such a tycoon as Bernard Manus Baruch, even Stalin was unable to punish Litvinov severely. The latter was eventually placed under house arrest, but before doing so, was asked to write a statement of his own volition a valuable exchange of gold for bonds. It is almost no secret that where there is big money, there is full-fledged power. And Bernard Mans Baruch is vivid proof of that. Let's remember the details of the deal the US made with China. At that time, China was under the rule of Chiang Kai-shek. True, the politicians suffered defeats in the country one after another. And then came a unique opportunity. Baruch with bundles of bonds. It goes without saying that Chiang Kai-shek agreed to the deal, and there it was, the miracle that happened, like the deal of the century. As a result of such speculation, China handed over 100 tons of gold bullion to the United States. In addition to this precious metal in the hands of the Americans, passed silver, as well as jewelry and a bunch of different antiques. Chiang Kai-shi received the promised 250 bonds, which allowed him to fully rest in his old age on the wonderful island of Taiwan. Dollar billionaire and endless aspirations. At the end of the 30s of the last century, Bernard Mans Baruch once again succeeds in finance, and then he became a dollar billionaire. From now on, his fate flies past the Second World War. And how can it be? when there is so much money. The only thing that Baruch did during the war years was to advise the American government on various issues, as well as financial support for his own projects and decisions. Soon, the tycoon moved to the nuclear program and subjugated the nuclear industry. His ambitions knew no limits, and soon Baruch declared that he wanted to rule the whole world. Who inherited or will inherit the tycoon's legacy is unknown. Bernard Manes Baruch lived 94 years and died in 1965. Surprisingly, but the grave of the tycoon looks quite modest. No fence, no monument, etc. But that is not the question now. So who is the heir of Baruch and what is the total state of Bernard Manes? This question remains open. Because the necessary information and key information is not available at all, they are removed by unknown persons. Perhaps soon the secret will be spilled and this information will become available. That is why the Rothschild and Rockefeller clans are perplexed and confused. They realize who they have actually encountered. And the most important thing is what kind of connections Baruch had, an undisputed leader capable of many things. Conclusion. Thus, Bernard Manners Baruch is a serious and invincible competitor for Rothschild and Rockefeller. Because the tycoon succeeded in almost everything and was able to earn, though it is unclear what fortune, but clearly cosmic. Even the source of such income simply does not exist. Also, Bernard Manns went down in history as one of the most famous speculators in the world and at all times.